why I stopped buying real estate. I know, I know, Noelle is talking crazy. I literally have one of I Buy Houses shirt telling you I stopped buying real estate. Well, there was so much going on in the economy, in the market, investor confidence, even my personal life. There is so much that I need to explain to you. I'm gonna tell you all of it in this video and explain what you should be doing next. Let's go. Noelle. Yeah, she can fix that. If you gotta get it done, no, you need to do it better. Well, she can fix that. Yeah, she can fix that. Investment to get back, trying to get a big stack. She can fix that. Let's fix that. I'm gonna share with you the truth about real estate investing right now. I'm gonna share with you my three biggest secrets to avoid real estate losses. And I'm gonna share with you the number one way to invest in real estate without debt. Obviously, real estate is the number one way to wealth. 89% of all millionaires have been created so through real estate. Literally, this real estate millionaire was created so through real estate. I used to live in my parents' basement. I was bankrupt. I had bad credit, multiple foreclosures. I was just in the worst situation ever, and I started investing in real estate. I had a coach that taught me that real estate can cash flow. You literally can start investing in real estate that you don't own, and it can cash flow. You can buy real estate and flip it to other investors and make money. You literally can have rental properties that bring in passive income all the time. He taught me fixing and flipping, how to find properties for pennies on the dollars, renovate those properties, and then sell them for a profit. Additionally, there were so many tax benefits that I didn't even realize existed. Like I could write off my rental property expenses and the mortgage interest and depreciation and all of these amazing things tied to real estate. It is truly the reason why most people that have money invest in real estate, but I'm gonna be even more clear, this is how most millionaires are made. So let me tell you how you get it done. Whoa, before I get into this part, let me tell you about North One. If you're an entrepreneur, you need a business checking account and North One Banking is where you should start. You can easily get your account set up in less than three minutes and you can do the entire thing online. Additionally, you get a debit card that you can use across thousands and thousands of ATMs across the country. It is one of the best business checking accounts for new entrepreneurs, and I absolutely recommend it. If you do not have your own business checking account, you will need it. This will help you get business funding, business credit, business lines of credit, other credit cards, and so much more. Additionally, you can even connect your North One banking account to your QuickBooks, your PayPal, your Square, your Stripe, or whatever. It is an amazing account with some amazing tools, and you should definitely click the link below and open your North One account today. All right, back to this video. So let's talk about how you really invest in real estate. I learned how to invest in real estate the correct way. So let me tell you how I got out of my parents' basement investing in real estate. Like I said, I started when I was bankrupt. I was broke. I had no job. I had bad credit. I had no money. I was just in the worst situation ever. But while I was in my parents' basement, I started going to real estate investor conferences and classes and just going to seminars and meetups. And I started learning about real estate the correct way. And I started finding people that were having property problems and I was able to make tons of money. In fact, that's how I got out of my parents' basement, flipping houses without ever leaving my parents' basement and without ever using any banks or my credit. He taught me how to find people with property problems, which were people like me, the old me, where I was in foreclosure. I would reach out to them, I would put out signs, I would send letters, and then I would get them on the phone, get them under contract, and then I would flip those contracts to other investors for a fee. Those other investors would either fix and flip those homes or they would make them into rental properties. But either way, it was win-win because I was doing all of the legwork for that investor. And that is a simple way to start investing in real estate. More importantly, you learn to find people with property problems, so now you know how to find properties for pennies on the dollar. Once I got out of my parents' basement, you know, with the wholesaling, then I got back into fixing and flipping, and eventually I got rental properties and was able to quit my six-figure job. It was amazing. Then I got on YouTube, started teaching people, and it has really just taken off. But one of the big things that happened about two years ago was I created a company called New Res Incorporated. 
That has been an amazing transformation for me, my business, and so many others. So let me explain to you how that worked and kinda why it made me stop buying real estate for just a little bit. So New Res Incorporated is my baby. It was a company that we did real estate crowdfunding with, okay? So if you ever look up my company, I absolutely love it. Me and over a thousand investors put this company together and we were going to buy properties or rent or control properties that we could put on short-term rental websites, basically Airbnbs, vacation rentals, short-term rentals, and I would split the profits with my investors. That has happened, we've closed the fund, you cannot invest, it's been many years, and in fact, we're moving to the point where I'm actually able to buy back shares, but I'll get to that in a second. So long story short, this company here got, I raised over a million dollars, basically about one million dollars from about a thousand people, okay? Just giving you round numbers. So these a thousand people, we all put our money together and we were able to buy some properties, okay? And I'm just gonna say, we, we were able to rent a lot of them and we, was, we were cash flowing on those. We still do that, but we actually own some properties, okay? So let me just say, um, using round numbers, let's just say we own four properties, okay, as a company. We have a duplex, we got a townhouse and we got some condos, okay? Plus we have, um, actually it's five, plus we have a commercial um, property, okay? We have an office building, it's commercial. And so with the funds raised, I was able to buy these properties and now we own them and we're cash flowing these properties and I'm able to send distributions on these. But this is not real where the real money came in. Like I said, I started buying these properties. So Noelle had to go out and stop buying her own real estate so that she could buy properties that could make money for new res. And now we've had some of those properties a year, two years. We're gonna start selling some of those properties and getting some of the profits and reinvesting them into other properties. So let me show you for a quick example. This property here, for example, we, had, we, were, we were thinking of selling, and I'm just gonna give you a quick example, okay? Let's just say this property, because we've had it for three years, it has gone up in value exponentially. So we bought it for about 500,000, and let's just say we put $100,000 down. So we owe about $400,000 on this property, okay? And again, I'm just using round numbers. If you look at the value, this property is now worth about $850,000. But I'm just gonna use round numbers and say that we have $400,000 in equity if we sold this property. Now again, this is a property that we got at the end of you know 2019 or whatever, that you know New Res controls, and they would be due part of the profits if we, you know, if we decide to sell it. But let's talk about this because if you sell an investment property, you have a lot of taxes that you have to pay, okay? And I gotta go and just quickly explain that to you here. So let me explain something quickly to you called capital gains taxes, okay? So whenever you sell a piece of real estate, it is your capital gains because your real estate was capital and obviously your profits are your gains, capital gains. I made another video and you can watch it about the new IRS tax brackets because they've kind of gone up for some of the higher income earners like myself. So basically, if you're a married couple and you make over maybe $650,000 per year, your tax rate is about 37% under this new tax bracket, which is pretty high. So let's go back to the example that I told you where we have $400,000 worth of equity if we sold this property. Obviously, if we pay 37%, that is a lot of money that we would have to pay in taxes. You kind of get why you don't necessarily want to just cash out from your rental properties and why you end up buying more rental properties. Well, if you don't, I'm gonna really explain this to you. If this was not a rental property, if this was a primary residence, if I was a single person, I actually don't have to pay capital gains on the first $250,000. If I'm a married couple, I don't have to pay capital gains taxes on the first $500,000. But like I said, this is for primary residences only. You have to have lived in the house the past two to five years. I clearly explained this is an investment property. It is not it is not a primary residence. So we do not get the benefit of the first 250 or $500,000 not being taxed at 37%. In fact, it's all taxed at 37% because this is an investment property which comes out to about 148 thousand dollars okay so four hundred thousand times thirty seven percent equals this number and this is what would be due to the IRS 
This is crazy, right? Could you imagine you sell a property, you get 400,000 and before you could ever take it home, you gotta write the IRS a check for $148,000? Well, you don't. Because as real estate investors, we do something called uh, a 1031 exchange, all right? And many of you have already, some of you know about this, but most of you don't. And so this is something that investors use with their investment properties. And this is how we save tons of money on taxes and how we get way more rental properties and we become big time investors. And again, how you can do the same thing. So let's just take, for example, I sold that first house. I told you it was a duplex and I was gonna sell it and I was then gonna make $400,000, okay? But instead of paying taxes of $148,000, I'm gonna put this into a 1031 exchange. A 1031 exchange is very simple. It simply means you sell your rental properties, any of your investment properties, and again, it could be hotels, it could be commercial real estate, and again, this gets really big when you're talking about selling a hotel, for example, and this is what real real estate investors do. They do 1031 exchanges. That $400,000, you know, from this house that I have here, would then go to um, a 1031 exchange company called a qualified intermediary okay and I'm gonna put that word on the screen a qualified intermediary so this way the money is not taxed so I give them because they are a third party they are an uninterested party that will distribute this money on other real estate properties that I buy so like I said this one cost me a hundred thousand dollars to get I told you that. So if I get $400,000 from the close of this, what would I do? Of course, I would buy four more rental properties, right? Because that's what we do as real estate investors. And this is how we get rich really fast, okay? Why it really doesn't take a long time. And you're buying and selling real estate. So now I'm not taxed on this amount. The qualified intermediary will distribute the funds on all of these closings. It's basically like I use this guy as an escrow holder. You know, they're a third uninterested party that's holding my profits from the sale of my rental property and they're gonna distribute it as I buy other rental properties. You get that? And that way I don't have to pay taxes on this number right here. And this is why we do 1031 exchanges because capital gains are taxed at such a high amount. And so let me be clear, this was a small amount, 400,000. Literally we have homes and properties that we sell where we get 5 million, 2 million, 3 million. Just imagine if you sell a hotel and you make $3 million. Could you imagine paying 37% taxes on $3 million? <laughs> yeah, neither could the other rich people. They could not imagine. And that's why they created this, okay? And I wanna stress to you, this is what the US economy is built to do. It is built to protect investors, entrepreneurs, and business owners, especially when it comes to real estate. They have created so many easy ways for you to not pay any taxes and grow your wealth exponentially. So now that you kind of understand what we've been doing, that's why I haven't been buying houses. I have literally been working on selling some of the properties, looking at the values, and then like I told you earlier, I have over a thousand investors that invested in New Res, and some of them, we've been taking some of the, you know, we're gonna obviously buy some properties, but some of the gains that we get from selling these properties, we're gonna, you know, buy back these shares from these people, just using that as an example. I don't wanna, you know, tell you too many proprietary secrets of, of how we run our business, but this is how you can have investors too, and they, they help you buy properties, and you use the money from the properties to pay them back. Like, it is an amazing, system on what you can do and it is really really easy and it's not very expensive so this is what you want to do you want to you know i'm selling properties so that i can reinvest and i can pay off investors and that is literally why I had stopped buying properties for a second. So let me tell you what I'm working on now. So now I am back. I am literally buying more properties. Like I said, I didn't really buy too many properties in 2022. I was working on those values going up. We've been putting our investors together. We've been selling properties and we have been moving in so many different ways. But now 2023 is creating opportunities that we have never seen before, almost like 2009, where we are able to get properties for pennies on the dollars 
from people not recovering from the pandemic, for example, or people getting relocated or people being declined for loan modifications after they put their mortgage in forbearance. So literally we are able to get properties and we're finding properties and people are sending us deals. So we are back to buying real estate. But again, it depends on what you're doing. You can easily see from the example that I showed you why I stopped buying real estate for just a little while, but why real estate is always a good thing to be investing in because there's so many advantages that really work to your favor. So I will be teaching for an entire weekend and I wanna personally invite you because it's going to sell out and I'm not going to be able to do many more of these. Go to noelleschallenge.com and get your tickets right now so I can teach you for two full days how to grow your wealth using business credit, real estate, side hustles, and so much more. You can upgrade to VIP status and you literally get a Zoom VIP quick Q&A session directly with me. It is amazing. I wanna make sure that I'm giving all that I can before I move on to my next thing. Go to noelleschallenge.com and get your ticket right now. You do not wanna miss this. I just wanna make sure that you have all of the resources, all of the tools, and all of the knowledge that you need to be successful. This is Noelle, to your success.